okay, just gonna do a video. This has been at the back of my mind for, I'd say, about a year, I'd say. Even when I was part of Brian Dillinger's cult, this has been at the back of my mind bothering me. I just never came out about it because I just, I didn't think it was that big of an issue for a while. Uh, but I was doing some reflection, looking back at some old research I've done and, and looking at the scriptures too. And this is not just a light matter that I've been overlooking. And what really kind of set this whole thing off was when I saw that Philip Newton, who for a while, was essentially a Brian Dillinger clone, even he came out and rebuked Brian Dellinger on this. And Brian Dellinger, through his pride, just would not take the correction and was in the comments just calling Philip, you know, saying, oh, you're not qualified to preach and whatever. You see, the thing about Brian Dellinger is that when people leave Brian's cult, and yes, it is a cult, okay? And keep in mind, I'm not saying that Brian is unsaved. I'm not saying he's lost. I'm just saying that Brian's got very, very serious pride issues, very, very high-minded, and he does not take any correction or accept any reproof. This has been evident. He thinks that because he's an elder, because he's older, even though he's only 45 years old, you know, he's 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 barely even middle-aged yet, but he thinks he's an elder, and that he basically, essentially what he thinks is that if you're younger and you try to correct him, you but you're wrong for doing so, you're in sin for doing so, which is not true at all, which is heresy, okay? And the thing about Brian Dellinger is that people who leave Brian's cult don't leave because, oh, we just love our sin, or, or we're, just, we're just carnal, worldly. No, people leave because Brian is arrogant, prideful, puffed up, high-minded, and he just will not take correction or reproof on anything. He's always right on everything, and if you disagree with him, you're just in some sin, or you're, you're just living in sin, basically. That's been evident. When Brother Tim tried to come out and correct Brian over his, his blatant heresies that are getting into the grounds of Lordship Salvation, and how Brian Dellinger is just making just very, very, very false claims and accusations, Tim got called lost by the cult members who follow Brian Dillinger. You know, I came out and lovingly and very, 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 very calmly and lovingly tried to just simply voice disagreements with Brian, and his cult labeled me lost too. You know, because Brian can't take the correction. He's apparently above receiving reproof. So people who come out against Brian, we're not saying he's unsafe. Okay, we're not like the wicked devils over at the Fenninger right cult with the King's Table, Max Bauer, uh, Ed Fenninger, those guys. We're not like those heretics, okay? Because, you know, Brian and his cult, they like to lump people like us, like me and others, who disagree with Brian, they like to lump us in with those heretics. No, you, you can't put us in that little box, okay? But people who leave Brian's cult, because they try to lovingly correct Brian, and he just he just won't take it. He's consumed in pride, and it's evident because he just, he thinks he's always right. That's what it comes down to. He thinks he's always right, and you're just lost in his sin if you don't agree with him. So going to show some scriptures on the issue of Christmas. And this was an issue that I think, oh, wasn't that big of a deal. But since doing some further research and just reflecting on some past studies and, and videos I've done and also reflecting on the scriptures, it's not a light matter. And also uh, with the recent events of Philip Newton coming out and rebuking Brian. And Philip Newton, again, for a while was a Brian Dillinger clone. And even he came out and rebuked Brian. And of course, Brian was in the comments refusing to take correction because, again, like Obadiah 1.3 says, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Brian is very, very prideful, and that pride that is in his heart has deceived him and is blinding him to taking correction. And I believe it's getting to the point where all we can do now is just simply pray that God takes care of it and that God chastises Brian and his cult members because he just, he won't take any correction. He will not admit to being wrong. But I'm going to show you the issue, talk about the issue of Christmas because Brian Dellinger misuses liberty. He, he uh, twists liberty in Romans 14, 5 to try to teach that, Christians are, are have liberty to celebrate the pagan heathen holiday of Christmas. And this is an issue that is not a light matter because he's leading Christians astray. He's making them think that when Romans 14, 5 talks about esteeming one day above another, that somehow means we can celebrate a holiday that's steeped in paganism. You know, and he'll, 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 he, he won't admit that it's steeped in paganism, or he may admit it, but he'll try to downplay it. But the truth is, is that Christmas is pagan. Okay, you can do the research. It's, it's all out there. The information is out there. Christmas is a pagan holiday. Okay, It's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It's got nothing to do with the Bible. It's got nothing to do with Christianity. Okay, It's actually a Roman Catholic. You know, Brian is so anti-Catholic. Why is he celebrating a Catholic holiday? Why is he celebrating a holiday that is that came from Roman Catholicism that the Catholics borrowed from various pagan European religions? You know, I thought Brian was against Catholicism. I thought he was against doing anything Catholic. But he's celebrating a Catholic holiday. You know, I'm going to get into the pagan aspect of Christmas, but the bottom line is, is that 
you do not have liberty to celebrate a holiday that is rooted in paganism, okay? You cannot Christianize something that is pagan, okay? You can't take something that is pagan and put a cross on it. You know, like the Catholics, when they took over the Roman Empire, when the Roman Empire fell and reemerged as the Catholic Church, they simply took the pagan Greco-Roman temples and put a cross on them. You can't do that. You cannot take... I mean, if, if we can celebrate a holiday because of, oh, we can just see one day above another, how far does it go? Like Philip Newton pointed out, you know, uh, when it talks about holy days, well, you know, Halloween's a holy day, so can we celebrate Halloween? You know, uh, I might link to Philip Newton's study, but he brought up some good points that... Romans 14.5, when it talks about esteeming one day above another, is referring to esteeming a day unto the Lord, okay? What does Christmas, Christ Mass, because that's what it is, it's a Catholic holiday. What does that have to do with Jesus Christ? Because the Jesus Christ of Roman Catholicism is not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Jesus Christ of Roman Catholicism is a pagan god. It's, the, it's an antichrist. It's the antichrist, essentially. It's, it's an antichrist spirit, essentially. So... I'm going to show you some scriptures that, just a few couple, couple of quick scriptures, just showing that, uh, no, you do not have liberty to take a pagan holiday and try to Christianize it. And Brian is in sin. He is in, in very serious sin, and he's leading people astray. It's just like how Peter, in uh, Galatians 2, verse 11 to 14, got in trouble because he led Gentile Christians astray with Jewish traditions. Brian's doing the exact same thing. Okay? We're going to show some scriptures. First of all, okay, when you have a tradition that's passed down. You know, when you have a tradition, you know, whether you're kindred or whatever, and I'm not against, you know, being proud of your kindred. I'm Slavic and I, I you know, am very happy of my Slavic heritage. Um, but that does not give you any kind of reason to use liberty to celebrate those holidays. When you got, when you have a tradition of men, you ought to test that tradition, okay? Colossians chapter two, verse number eight, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Christmas is traditions of men. It's not after Christ. It's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. You cannot take uh, Romans 14.5 and use that to celebrate a holiday that's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. You cannot do that. You are learning the way of the heathen to sin. That's what Colossians 2.8 says. You know, spoil your philosophy. But it's traditions of men. That's all it is. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 2 to 4. Jeremiah 10 verses 2 to 4. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, you know, like philosophy and vain deceit, in Colossians 2 8. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe, they deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. That's what you're doing when you celebrate Christmas. You're taking a tree out of the forest, you're decorating it with gold and silver, with ornaments, and you're fastening it to the ground so it does not move. You are learning the way of the heathen. Brian, you are learning the way of the heathen, and you're misleading your followers to practice the way of the heathen. You're in sin. And hopefully you can drop your pride and repent, but if you don't repent, I pray the Lord Jesus Christ gives you gives you some severe chastening until your pride is broken, because it's getting out of hand. It's getting to the point where you just you're you're going after anybody who, who who just lovingly tries to correct you. Okay, you got very 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 serious pride issues, very serious, and it's getting to the point of that it may get to the point where we just have to let God take care of it, and we have to let God chasten you and punish you. Uh, Ezra chapter six verse twenty one. And again, I left Brian Dunninger's cult back in um, September of, or sorry, September 27th actually was the day I left of uh, 2020. And it wasn't even me who left. I actually just lovingly tried to correct Brian and they came off for me and they called me lost, you know? And yes, I am being stern because you know what? Brian needs it, okay? Yeah, I am a lot younger than Brian, but you know what? He's in sin, he's in pride, and he needs to repent. And it doesn't matter, it does not matter if he's older, it does not matter if he's an elder, okay? Just because you're an elder does not mean you're above receiving correction. Okay, and not to mention too, because they love they love to rip. Brian loves to always rip that one verse in First uh, Timothy chapter five, totally out of context, which says rebuke not an elder. But he never reads down to verses nineteen through to twenty one, which give the instructions to how to rebuke an elder. If you have at least two witnesses and the elder is an unrepentant sin, you have every right to rebuke him if he's an elder. Ex that's just how it goes. That's what the scriptures say. 
Okay, you should obviously have respect for your elders. You should treat them nicely. But if they're in unrepentant sin and you have at least two witnesses, you have every right to rebuke them regardless if they're an elder or not. Being an elder does not make you above receiving reproof and correction. And if you think that, you're a cult leader. Okay, it's no different, it's no different than the IFB. You know, Brian would condemn the IFB pastors for using their position of a, of a pastor to uh, deflect rebukes. Brian's doing the exact same thing. He's a hypocrite. He's doing the very thing he used to condemn the IFB for. Uh, a fee, or Ezra chapter 6, verse 21. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land, to seek the Lord God of Israel, did eat. You see, when you're celebrating Christmas, you're not separating yourself from the heathen, from the filthiness of the heathen. Now, yes, this is talking to Old Testament Israel, but... All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for instruction in righteousness. Second Timothy chapter two, sorry, Second Timothy chapter three, verses sixteen and seventeen. Paraphrasing, of course. Of course, uh, 1 Corinthians ten eleven and Romans fifteen four clearly say that what's written in the Old Testament is for our learning and ad admonition, not for our salvation, because they're under a different dispensation, and not everything directly applies to a Christian, but we can use it for our learning and admonition. And when you're celebrating Christmas, when you're misusing liberty. To celebrate Christmas to justify your sin, you are not you are not separating yourself from the filthiness of the heathen. You're learning the way of the heathen, and you're you're uh, leading your followers astray by getting them to learn the way of the heathen. Ezekiel chapter eleven verse twelve. And again, Brian is in very serious sin, and I am being harsh because he needs it. He needs to repent. He, he's leading people astray. When you're in a position of an elder, okay, you are held to a higher standard. Okay, you're held to a lot higher standard, and if you're leading people astray, you will be held accountable for that before God, because you are the one who is pastoring the flock. You know, obviously, pastor, you know, elder, whatever. But when you're over a flock, when you're teaching people and you're leading them astray, and you're not taking correction, you're going to be held accountable for that. When you're an elder, more is ex more will be expected out of you than a newly saved Christian, because you're 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 in a position of authority, so you are held to a higher standard. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 12 And ye shall know that I am the Lord for ye have not walked in my statutes neither executed my judgments but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. You see celebrating Christmas or, or Vinoctin as Brian calls it you are doing after the manners of the heathen. That's all you're doing. It, again it has no basis in scripture. Where, where in scripture are we told to celebrate this? Where in scripture in fact where in scripture are we even told to celebrate Christ's birth? That's another thing for you, too, because they'll say, well, it's about Christ's birth. Chapter and verse, please. Like Philip Newton said, chapter and verse. Please give me a chapter and verse. Sorry, I, more, to be more accurate, I'll say book, chapter, and verse. Please give me a book, chapter, and verse that tells us to celebrate Christ's birth. Okay? Because that's a Catholic tradition. That's a Catholic heathen tradition. It's got nothing to do with scripture. So when someone says, oh, we're just celebrating Christ's birth, book, chapter, and verse, please. Give me a book, chapter, and verse that tells us to celebrate Christ's birth. And, and give me a book, chapter, and verse where that was ever being performed, where there was actually a celebration every year of Christ's birth. It's not in there. It's traditions of men. It's, a, it's the rudiments of the world, like Colossians 2.8 says. But now, I'm going to show you some proof that Christmas is indeed pagan. Because when you're celebrating it on September 25th, Okay, you're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, who is God. But guess what? That just happens to also be the day that many other pagan gods were born too. You see, Jesus Christ was not born December 25th. You have no proof of that. No scriptural and no historical proof of that. Okay, nowhere in scripture and nowhere in the, the writings of history is it said that Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. But guess who was born December 25th? Uh, Horus, the Egyptian god. He was born December 25th. Uh, Osiris, another Egyptian god, born December 25th. Uh, Attis of uh, Prygia, I hope I'm saying that right, born on December 25th. You know? Uh, Zoroaster, born on December 25th, an uh, Iranian god. Uh, Mithra, a Persian god, born on December 25th. Uh, Buddha, uh, Hercules, a Greek god, and there's, there's many others too. Uh, Dionysus, you know, born December 25th. And there's others too. You got uh, Tammuz, uh, a bunch of others as well. So why are you celebrating 
the supposed birth of Jesus Christ on a day where a ton of pagan gods are born, and also on the day where winter solstice, a pagan heathen holiday, occurs. Why? Because you're learning the way of the heathen. You are in sin, Brian. You are in sin and you're leading people astray, and God will hold you, will hold you accountable for that. Okay? And I pray you drop your pride and repent, but if you do not drop your pride, I pray the Lord Jesus Christ brings a chastening upon you and your household until you repent. So this has been a rebuke of Brian Dillinger and his the fact that he's wrong about celebrating Christmas and that he's, he's misusing Christian liberty. Just like any lost, uh, easy believe as an antinomian heretic will misuse Christian liberty to play wicked video games like Grand Theft Auto, like, you know, Jack Smack 7 7 does. You know, um, Brian Dillinger is misusing uh, liberty to celebrate a holiday that is heathen and pagan in origin, and that comes from Roman Catholicism. And of course, Roman Catholicism is just pagan religion repackaged. So, you're in sin, Brian, for twisting Romans chapter 14, verse 5, to use that as an excuse to celebrate a day that's got nothing to do with scripture and that is rooted in heathen religion. I pray you repent, Brian. You got very serious pride issues, and if, you're, if your pride is not broken, if you don't repent, I pray the Lord Jesus Christ brings a chastening upon your household. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren out there. Goodbye.